Hi, this is Dr. Walker. Welcome back to the channel, denwalker.com. Today I'm going to talk quickly about uh, hydroxychloroquine. This came to light just over a year ago when President Trump was given hydroxychloroquine um, when he got COVID. And uh, it's sort of been up in the news back and forth and so forth in terms of uh, is, it, is it wise to take, is it not wise to take, and, and those kind of things. So at that time now, Dr. Zelenko, um, Zev Zelenko, um, had been looking at that and using that in some of his patients. He had used it on hundreds of patients. In, 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 in fact, in his testimony, he did not have one patient at that time die from early treatment, early intervention, using hydroxychloroquine. So at that time, um, Vice, President, uh, Vice President Pence had given the okay authority for it to be used across the country after he had given it an EUA. Um, then the governor of New York came in and said, you know what, uh, why don't I do that? Despite showing such good um, results, we're not going to do that. We're going to stop doing that. And then Biden comes into office and Biden says, you know what, we'll pull this EUA, stop hydroxychloroquine, no more. So then Dr. Zelenko, who had been using the vents before, ventilators before, um, found that many people who were on vents were dying, right? Found some a solution in, in hydroxychloroquine, using it for a while, patients doing well, the powers that be stopped it. He went back to using <laughs> the ventilators. See where this is going? Back to using the ventilators, and you know results weren't so good. But then what he did find um, in, in in all of this was that there is th there are other things out there that does similar thing, right? So the hydroxychloroquine is is an ionophore, right? And what that does it enables zinc specifically to get into the cell. Once zinc is inside the cell now, zinc does its job by decreasing viral, viral replication. Um, but other things also do, does the same thing. Ivermectin sort of does does the same thing. Uh, both ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine obviously does um, more than just that, right? But it's one of the th things that they, they do. But then the other thing that does sort of the same thing again is quercetin. Quercetin, again, enables zinc to get into the cell where viral replication can then be inhibited by, by the zinc. Now, um, the ask of this video is for people. Now, if you if you can have your doctor prescribe you ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine, whatever they can get for you, if you can get that to happen, then great. I think you're I think you're solid. If you cannot, then the ask would be to have yourself um, the over the counter quercetin uh, to help you when you have a problem, right? And and again, this is not just for people who have been vaccinated or not vaccinated. This helps across the spectrum. So um, Dr. Vandenbush, uh, the vaccinologist, and Dr. Zelenko, sort of, that's sort of their, 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 their discussion. It does make a difference. The process is still the same. The process is still that zinc is going to decrease viral replication once inside the cell, enabled specifically by the ionophore, either hydroxychloroquine, avimectin, or quercetin. Any of those things should be able to be able to help you. So key again, if you can, get your hands and at least get them in your home so that when you need them, you have them, you have them available. Dr. Zelenko's thought would be, or uh, is that, in a younger person, probably there is no need to take it prophylactically. Um, in that, if you're less than 30, no medical problems, you can probably then sort of do away with sort of taking it every day. I've been taking it every day, I'm in my 50s, um, not much medical problems, but I think I'm gonna pull back a little bit away from that. So in other words, I think my vitamin D levels are high enough um, that it should be protective enough, and when I do have a a positive test, then I'll go back to taking uh, Kirsten based on the Zelenko's protocol. Now, if you are greater than 60 and you have multiple medical problems, you have hypertension, you have diabetes, you have any of those things in concert, puts you at even higher risk. And so his recommendation would be that you then take the Kirsten if you have it um, prophylactically, which is 500 milligrams every day, right? And then when you get a positive test, so, so positive test again, if you're feeling unwell, then you go and you get your COVID test. You get your COVID test and the test results are positive. At that point, now you begin to take your um, treatment dose, essentially, of the zinc, quercetin, hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin process, that combination. Take them for treatment now, not prophylactically, right? That's that's the that's the process, that's the key. And again, if you can get your doctor to write your prescription for ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, great. If not, you should still, in your house, have in your arsenal, uh, uh, the kerosene to be able to take that if you were to become symptomatic. Um, and the reason, again, the reason I'm stopping pulling back probably from a daily regimen of the kerosene, you know, um, probably not needed in, in, in my uh, 
sort of with my personal micro history, um, pro probably not needed. Again, my vitamin D levels are high enough, right? So the key and your key, you can start out with 10,000 units. I'm doing 10,000 units myself. And again, dark skin people, darker skin people have more problem with vitamin D uh, proliferation um, than fair skin people. So I take 10,000. Take your 10,000, check yourself again, six to eight weeks thereabouts, and try to get your levels up to 80 or 90. Some doctors will say, oh my God, 90 is too much. I, I disagree, right? Um, and, and again, that's a, that's, a, that's a whole other discussion to be made. But the higher your, your vitamin D levels, I think the more protective you are against getting not just COVID, but other viral uh, disease process as well, to get your levels high. My levels are um, just under 80, <laughs> so I'm gonna get, get up a little bit more. Uh, if I can, but um, I think that should be protective enough. So vitamin D for myself, vitamin D, quercetin, I'm doing selenium as well, I'm doing el uh, elderberry, um, you know, and sort of eating right as well. All that stuff is a part of my whole uh, my whole um, list of reasons as to why I'm pulling back on the quercetin. Quercetin can be problematic, and again, I've not seen it personally, but people who are hypothyroidism, so low, low thyroid hormone status, one, and two, people who have who are on Coumadin, there is sort of a, some thought that it could also, it could sort of modulate or modify um, your Coumadin levels, and so that could be problematic, especially if you're trying to be within a certain range in terms of your, in terms of those numbers. So that's sort of the only um, big concern that I see with kerosene. But again, I don't need it necessarily every day. I'm going to pull back a little bit. And if I, even I, even if I took it a couple times a week, I think I'd still be, I'd, I'd still be okay. Um, with that, but probably not every day and every day regiment uh, as, I've, as I've done before. And again, because my vitamin D levels are high enough, and uh, many, many papers out there saying uh, if your levels are, are high enough, there are very, very few people who are um, hospitalized, ICU hospitalized, when you have your numbers sort of in the range that I'm, that I'm talking about. Um, so that's the goal for myself to get my numbers high enough so that I should not, I should not have much of a problem long term. Anyway, um, that's the point of my discussion today. Thank you for listening. Uh, Take care of yourself, drwalkerdenwalker.com. Thanks.